As a film production company making commercials, documentaries, and music videos, we do have a lot of equipment. And some of the cameras are quite big with some big lenses. But do you need that much equipment to create high quality videos? With the latest iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can get professional Hollywood-like footage. Or at least that's the impression you get when you watch the launch videos from some of the latest smartphone releases. So how professional can the result from an iPhone be when it comes to video? We wanted to test how far we can push smartphone cinematography. And as you might know from this channel, we want to do it quite big. So let's test out the camera for a travel shoot in India in addition to shooting a fictional scene with a crew. This is going to be exciting. I think the most important part of making a video shot on a phone look good is to make it look, well, less like it was shot on a phone. Phones typically have this over-sharpened HDR look with too aggressive electronic stabilization. It's easy to see that something is filmed on a phone. We want to overcome that, but in order to do it, we need some accessories. The iPhone's default camera is quite limited in terms of control. So the best app for this is definitely Filmic Pro. This app gives you full control over shutter speed, ISO, white balance, codecs, focusing, and you can even shoot in log for easier color grading. You can also manually control focus and rack between focus modes. I started using Filmic Pro four years ago when I shot a horror movie at my cabin with my family using the Samsung S6. And it was so fun to really have full control of the image and also force my camera to produce the best possible quality. While we researched for the best accessories, we found this ecosystem with products that seem to work really well together. Filmic Pro works great with the Xeon Smooth 5S gimbal, for example. Just connect it with the app and you can start and stop recording, adjust focus, or access the menus. So you can record, uh, you can do a focus pull, and you can access the menu system and things like this. This gimbal was the only one we found that can handle the weight of the iPhone 14 Pro Max with filters. And this gimbal has everything you would need with different operation modes, easy balancing, and heavy payload. You might ask, why do you need a gimbal when the stabilization inside the phone is quite good? Well, it is good if you have a short shutter speed. However, if you have the shutter speed at 180 degrees, which you should have to make the footage look more cinematic, you will get a horrible looking stabilization blur. So a gimbal is needed for smooth results when using the correct shutter speed. And speaking of shutter speeds, we need some filters. The most convenient filters we found was the Freewell Sherpa kit. You have this phone case and you can attach the filters like this magnetically. Uh, you have uh, mist filters, you have ND filters, and you also have a combination of ND and mist filters. This mist will hopefully be able to take away some of the digital sharpness of the phone footage. Lastly, when talking to Filmic Pro about how to best grade their log footage, they recommend us to use Film Convert. Film Convert is apparently testing the sensors and the log profile to get the most accurate results. We'll show you more of this soon. As we wanted to use quite a bit of time on this video, uh, we reached out to all of them, Film Convert, Filmic Pro and Xiyun, and they were all very positive to sponsoring this video. So Morten traveled all the way to India and that was a good opportunity to really test out the phone camera when it comes to running gun shooting and using natural lights. I think this is a very typical scenario where using only your phone is great. I was able to fit all the equipment into a small purse. I could film in places where you're not allowed to bring professional cameras and I look less scary to the people I'm filming. Uh, how is it looking? I think it looks pretty good. It reminds me of a James Bond movie or something. <laughs> James Bond in India. Wow. Yeah, I like this. How much did you do with this shot? Like, how, if we weren't to do, to do anything? Like, of course, you, you shot in this uh, fat uh, picture profile from Filmic, but... Uh, <clears throat> like okay, okay. And that's, even that is cool. Yeah. But just uh, the lighting and, the, and the everything is so much to say. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I like this shot. The way, like, the water 
comes towards you yeah, the, and all the, the lines going yeah, towards yeah, yeah, the you. perspective, the light, what's happening, yeah. the water, and you're moving the camera as well. Yeah. Did you use the gimbal? Yeah, like a simple upwards, yeah. upwards uh, movement. So I'm, I'm color grading this, like we mentioned with, uh, with Film Convert. This way I'm just adding a quick, quick grade oh, to this. Yeah. I'm actually adding just a default here. Um, yeah. They do come out with their own profiles. Mm -hmm. So right now when we're recording this, the iPhone 14 is pretty new. So they don't have the, the, the profile for that yet. So I'm just using the default yeah. and doing a little bit of contrast in a node before. Yeah, I remember those spin stocks from I used uh, Film Convert a long time ago when we yeah. shot with the GH4. Yeah. It was so fun to use Film Convert. It was quite new and it was like a quick way to make your digital footage look like a film. And it's like just one press of a button and like, whoa, you can see the change. What this does really well is just kind of eliminate a bit of that digital sharpness. So if you look at this before, like you see on his oh, face here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what I've done, is to add a bit of grain, of course. Mm -hmm. The slider that I haven't used too much before, but which was really nice for this, uh, filmed on a phone stuff, is this image softness. This just adds a bit of blur, but like a nice blur in mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. um, so this is without, yeah. and you see when I turn it up, I use like 25. It blurs mm -hmm. things a bit, but it looks much more organic and it gets rid of those really harsh edges here. And yeah, I see. without losing, detail in a way it's, yeah it's, see. it's really nice cameras are so good that we're just trying to make it worse you know? <laughs> that's true and of course depends on the delivery like this is kind of a, a moody uh, travel video shoot yeah where we can like adjust the picture quite a lot and you can make it softer because it's all about the mood yeah. if we were to shoot a commercial with like a shampoo commercial or something you probably want it really sharp and bright it says 10 bits so the colors are actually quite nice to mm. grade um, and it has some sort of weird like tone mapping from Apple side so that the dynamic range is actually really good okay. But it's like fake kind of fake dynamic range. It's like this HDR thing that it okay. does with the image So you can actually see when even though you put manual controls Like if you move your camera like around it can change a bit of the exposure because it's like doing local tone mapping like raising the shadows lowering the highlights okay. like in the camera and that's also before the filmic pro comes in yeah okay so, so you can't turn it off you no, uh, no not as far as i know so no. like this is the sun shooting directly into the sun and you have a really nice like fall off of the sun mm -hmm. it's not super hard the highlight roll off yeah i see i see and you still have a lot of shadows here in uh, shadow um, details here in the boat and mm. it's actually a good dynamic range that's ungraded yeah this is ungraded and this is with a grade okay but I intentionally made it kind of like warm and like with the with the temperature control mm. in the filming pro app because that's like one thing to make something look more filmatic is to like add a look yeah like this for example I shot it really cold yeah. like this like this train station look. Did you use a mist filter here? Yeah, yeah. here I used a mist filter. You can see that in the... the blooming in yeah. the light. So how dark was it here? Like, do you think the camera is good at low light? Um, it was quite dark, it was the middle of the night, so, but mm -hmm. because the aperture is actually quite fast, it's like yeah. 1.7 or something, Yeah. on, on the bigger, uh, the wide lens. So mm -hmm. you actually get quite, um, you, you don't have to go that high with the ISO usually, mm -hmm. but here I was probably at like 200 or yeah. the base ISO is 50. So it, it's not that great when you start to pump the ISO. Yeah. Uh, like here, it's a cool yes. shot because of the colors, but yeah. if you look at the details, yeah. it's not that much. Uh, and it's doing a lot of like automatic noise reduction and mm -hmm. things like that. So okay. the downside with the iPhone is that the noise reduction and the um, sharpening and uh, the local tone mapping is like built in very early in the pipeline so mm. when filmic gets the shot mm. it's already noise reduced mm. and we making films it's we prefer to do it in post because they have more control yeah. and it's better yeah. is that with the other lens this one yeah yeah it's with the zoomed in lens did you, did you like uh, notice uh, quite different yeah difference? it's it's worse definitely like the 24 or whatever it is like the wide angle is mm -hmm. definitely the best sensor yeah. um when yeah. you zoom into like the 75 the 3 3x 
it gets worse. But sometimes it looks really good like this one. I think it looks really nice. Because the, the 24 is more, so the aperture is probably bigger. Like yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, faster. it's a, yeah. a bigger aperture and also the sensor is much, much bigger. So, so Yeah, because that's the thing, every lens has its own sensor. So of course it can. Yeah. yeah. So, but then you could, could um, you have some lenses you can put on mm -hmm. um, that you could zoom in the the big sensor and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. If you. If that would be interesting to test one day. Yeah. You don't have too many of like close-ups of people. The ca camera falls a little bit apart when you go like close to the faces or okay. like medium shots. It's difficult to get like the details in their mm. skins and stuff. I would like to have some close-ups for the fictional scene. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do that, so it's going to be interesting to see how it looks. Okay, I see you added some music, some sound effects and color grading. I'm curious to see what you have made. Should we have a look? Yeah, okay, let's uh, roll the film. Where's the popcorn? Let's go! Yeah. So, the camera works great for travel filmmaking. But what happens when we get a crew to shoot a fictional scene that is well lit with our film lamps? Well, let's test it out. Today, all of this is going to turn into an amazing, epic uh, library work study. Um, so as you can see, we don't have enough books for a lot of the shelves. So we've been printing out these. Uh, Malcolm shot them yesterday using the books we have. And we cut them out, fold them, and then up here you can see we put them in. And they look not fantastic from up close, but from the wide shot, you won't be able to tell that they're fake. That's so cool. That's crazy. It's gonna look so awesome when you lit it the right way, because now it's just really flat light. So many companies making lamps nowadays, like Cian also make lamps, and this is so powerful with this, this small device, so we can change the color temperature. So, oh, whoa, okay, yeah, let's keep it on the minimum. <laughs> So we have lights, a lot of practicals, you have moonlight coming in, some smoke, some haze. If you have a good set, you have a good actor and good sound, I think we can far, come far to create a cinematic look. I Don't mean, forget the passion. Passion, of course. The yeah. commitment <laughs> and the energy. Yes. Right. We're going to do some wide angle, um, some closer close-ups and some shots of the different props because for this film, we have a lot of props, which we're going to show, which is important for the story. And are you ready, Jonathan? Always. Yes. <laughs> Human. 
Hindenburg. For Heaven Mountain. Hindenburg is the mountain where the rainbow by first connects Asgard. <sighs> Kurtz. Bam. Nice. Bam. Heaven's castle, or Heaven Mountain. Himmelbjörg is the mountain where the rainbow Bifrost connects Asgard and Midgard. <sighs> Himmelbjörg is the mountain where the rainbow Bifrost connects Asgard and Midgard. So, should the big cinema cameras, the big cinema cameras, be threatened by this little guy just yet? Well, I don't think so. But there are some things with this phone that actually has a benefit compared to this one. Yeah, I don't think we're going to change this just yet. But no, uh, the iPhone was. I liked using it for like travel stuff. I'm, I'm used to having a bigger camera when I'm travel and just being able to to be kind of casual with this little setup, mm. maybe a small gimbal. I could get into places I couldn't uh, go with a professional camera, like museums and temples and things like that. It, I really liked it. Mm. And you know, there's like the most viral videos on YouTube, they are probably shot on like phones. Just, yeah. it's all about what's happening in, the, uh, in front of the camera. What's, uh, what is uh, exciting is what we see in front of the camera. So you were able to capture like moments in India we were like, whoa, this feels real. This feels uh, that like someone is not just doing something for you because they see you have a camera. It's like, oh, I have to do something. But you captured like natural moments and you captured a lot of good moments because it was easy to travel around with it. It was easy to shoot whenever you just saw something, you just pull up the phone. And that's also the series we made on this YouTube channel called Making a Film Company, which many of you enjoy. A lot of that was shot with a phone, especially the first season because we That's the like, camera we have with us all the time. It's easy yeah. to take out. But however, if you're going to shoot a commercial for a client... <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Like the image quality, it's, it's, it's getting better and better each year, but it's, it's still not there. But it helps having full manual control and a longer shutter speed. What, what I li really liked was to use uh, a custom white balance in the Filmic Pro app um, mm. in India, and I could go really cool uh, in some places, which I think often looks uh, quite cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, it makes it look more professional in a way if you can have a particular tone to your image. So, uh, but I mean, the details are not even close to what you have here, but mm. with uh, some film emulation, it can look kind of nice. Mm. Like you, you have that kind of look, but it's not never going to look as crisp as, as a real cinema camera. Yeah. I was actually a little bit disappointed when I saw the footage. I was like expecting even sharper, even more details. And but without being too like too sharp, because you know the digital look of it. If you want that really nice looking footage, you need to light it maybe a bit um, 
uh, more than we did in, uh, in for your scene because mm. it was kind of dark so we had to pump the ISO up to like just like 200 but it makes it a bit more noisy and yeah and I was also surprised like 200 is even too noisy yeah yeah the bass ISO is like 57 or something yeah like uh, another thing is that you can create different angles so it can be really it's easy to just shoot low shots shoot high shots shoot mm -hmm. from like tight corners to be able to capture the moments you want. Yep. Uh, what was interesting when we shot the fictional film was that I really wanted to focus a little bit, like go closer. I, I wanted to zoom in a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. for the close-ups because the, the best lens on this uh, camera is definitely the 24 millimeter. Yep, the standard wide. Yeah, which is a little bit wide. So when mm -hmm. I was, I wanted to shoot a close-up of, of Jonathan in the film, it, I, 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 we, we tried the tele lens on, on, the, on the iPhone, but it's, it's not that good. It's not as good in low light, and uh, it, the details are not really mm. there. Um, and I noticed the exact same thing in India when doing like street photography. 24 millimeter is kind of wide. Uh, for a fictional scene, we have more control, we have more time. We can actually bring this camera, and we know we get the quality that is expected from a shoot like this. So I think it's a little bit about expectation as well. Like yep. what's the client, or what do we expect for the final result? Yep. And um, yeah, then we choose the camera. Based on that, yeah. Yeah. we'll see you again with some more videos. We have three more videos coming very soon. And one of the videos is uh, behind the scenes of the Cloud Mountain shoot. So the fictional film you saw, the fictional scene, we're shooting that with this camera. We're going to show that <laughs> in behind the scenes, how we lit it up and how you, you set design and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you again soon. Hello. Yeah.